Hey muscle car lovers, welcome to Ron's Muscle Car Garage. Thanks again for watching everyone. Today I want to show you what it was that I did to convert this 69 Camaro front end over to a front steer rack and pinion steering. Uh, also I'm going to show you what I did here to add a motor plate, an engine plate. Um, that gives stability to the work that I did here as well. You'll see that and I'll explain that. I also want to thank many of you that have come over to the channel from my other channel. I have a billiard channel for those of you who don't know. And several of my um, people over there that are great pool players that we share ideas back and forth, they've come over to support this channel. I guess you guys are car guys too. Who's not a car guy? <laughs> I've been doing this since 77, you guys. Man, I tell you what, I have a passion for this probably more than I do for my pool game, um, although I'm really trying to get good at pool. But this is something that I've always done. I've learned a ton, uh, man, and I wanna share it with everybody. Um, you know my story too, my, my grandson, uh, you know, I wanna make sure that he can see how this car operates, how it works, how I, how I work on it, how I, you know, <laughs> improve it as we're always doing um, just like our pool game right uh, but anyway I wanted to show you guys today what it was that I had to go through to convert this front end over okay now real quick I want to I want to address something that one of my pool uh, player uh, subscribers Sharky you had mentioned that um, you know how much you know this weight savings could take away um, you know, safety, the safety aspect of the car. Well, uh, I had answered uh, Sharky, but I want to also answer anyone else watching this, that these changes are actually changes that the NHRA rule book um, will allow, okay, I should say, because these cars need to be inspected before, especially if they run pretty quick, they have to be inspected uh, for safety before they're even allowed to run down the track. So. NHRA um, has a rule book, and that rule book uh, does state what we can, I don't want to say get away with, but what is really allowed uh, and what is really recommended and, and really we need to be following, um, what will make the car safe. I guess that's a good way to put it. So um, I know one thing, that car right there, every time I take that to the track, I put that on my lift, I check every bolt, I look everything over. Man, you know, that thing, it's been as fast as 154.31 in the quarter. And uh, yeah, that's, that's some booking and cooking. Although it's funny because you don't even think you're going that fast when you're in these cars. But if something goes wrong, it can be bad. Now we're protected when we're in these because we have, in this case, that's got a really good cage in it. Um, got a lot of safety features. So, and you may have seen some drag racing incidents on TV where guys crash horribly and still walk away. And that's what we hope to, to have happen should something catastrophically go wrong, okay? Um, but in this case, let's get back to the 69. The 69 car, I have always wanted to uh, put these modifications in. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to change out the front brakes from uh, the very heavy factory disc brakes. So I've gone with these real nice lightweight um, uh, Willwood uh, and they're aluminum hubs, but then the rotor is bolted to them and the calipers are super lightweight. They're four piston caliper. Uh, but I wanted to do that and this is what I did here today. And it's funny, you guys that are pool players, understand that this whole brake, front brake uh, assembly up here that I bought through Willwood is cheaper than my pool cube, okay? Go figure. I mean, how, how much does it cost to uh, build a, a pool cube? When you see what's, gone, or what's going on here with the machining and you know the componentry and all of that, it just doesn't make sense. But that's the way it is. Now, the other thing I wanna do is, is, like I mentioned, change over to a rack and pinion steering. That helps lighten the car quite a bit, but also it's just bad, it's just bad looking. And I don't want to say badass. I don't like to say, I don't like to swear, but it's badass looking, okay? And uh, I wanted to put that in here and, and I did, man. I'll tell you what, I hit a home run on it too. I feel really good. I'm very methodical when I do my work. I try to make sure I do everything perfectly. And this was a change that I did some time back and I finally got everything all 
you know, done and I was able to paint the front end and I do my own paint, by the way. And so I painted all this framework. I painted the firewall again because that had some stickers on it and there were some issues there. Fixed all those and then reshot the paint there. But anyway, covering this today, I'm gonna show you some of the work I did leading up to it, okay? So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask, ask them. I know I have, have some on other Facebook uh, groups that I'm in. One in particular is uh, First Generation Lover, First Generation Camaro Lovers, that's what these are. 67, eight, and nine are the first gen Camaros in case you didn't know. Um, and I've had some questions on the rack and pinion. That's a popular changeover that a lot of guys do. Now the purist, I say purist because those are the guys that like everything from the factory on these Camaros to remain the same. And that's, that's good. That's another, you know, that's what they like. Okay, but for me, I like pro street. I like drag, man. I like drag cars. <laughs> I wanna go fast, I wanna look badass, and that's what I'm all about, okay? But anyway, let's, without further ado, I've been battling on too long here. Let's look at some of the work I had to do to get this sucker to the point where it's at today. Let me begin by just showing you what the car looks like uh, when it's completely finished. Here I am at one of the local car shows, just kind of cruising through the lot. Work actually begins by removing the front clip on the car. And here uh, you can see I'm dismantling it, getting everything out of the way because we're gonna be doing a lot of cutting and grinding and welding. And of course, we've got to really take care of the panels. We don't want those to get dinged up while they're off the car, so I just store them right in my dining room in the house. Once everything is removed, the first thing I had to do was to change my front roll bar. If you'll notice here that I'm using a piece of PVC pipe and I'm just kind of getting the shape that I want. And the old bar that you see there, the black bar, is curved out too much and there's a reason why that has to be changed and I'll show you in an upcoming shot. Okay now the bars uh, have been altered and you'll notice here that I've got a bracket welded and this is actually to hold uh, for the top anchor point for the front engine plate that I wanted to add to the car as well. That stiffens the car and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, but this has to be located in the uh, down bar uh, position where it's past the the elbow or the bend in that pipe that you just saw and before it would have been more on the horizontal area above that and that's not uh, sufficient for instru uh, for structural integrity and safety here I'm showing you where I've actually had to cut the the front down bar and add in a new totally different bar and this is what you have to do in order to splice a roll cage. Uh, this is uh, actually, if you will, to code or to the rule book uh, specifications. So you'll notice here that there's a gap between uh, the old bar, which is to the left, and then we look at the new bar that's welded in, and that's to the right right there, and you'll see there's a gap between that has to be filled with weld, and see those little uh, dots of weld that are on each side of that? Those are holes that are drilled through the first pipe and there's an insert that goes between the two pipes and you can just see it there in that gap and that's basically a splicer and we have to be able to weld that as, as well and that's why those uh, dimples of weld that you see, those are actually holes that are then uh, welded in which actually are welded to that insert that goes between the two uh, finished roll cage pipes. Once we have uh, welded in our brackets that hold our front plate, uh, and you can see here I've used a piece of uh, poster board to actually mimic, I actually traced out the, uh, the uh, aluminum plate and made it into a piece of poster board like you see here, easier to work with. And um, then I'm just kind of mocking up with an actual engine block, and you can see that in the background there with the blue tape over it so that I can uh, confirm the fit and make sure we have no issues once we've invested all this time into this work. Once we paint everything, we definitely don't want to be uh, having to cut things loose and redo uh, what we've already done. So this is a crucial, a crucial stage where we actually have to make it all come together. So definitely wanted to show you this part of this build. After the uh, motor plate work is complete, 
Here you'll see that I've welded in some bracing between the uh, factory frame, and you'll see them as bars there. And this ties the sides together because what I'm about to do is I'm gonna cut, cut the center section away. And you'll see I already have cut the front section away, but I'm gonna now cut the main K member, which is a critical part of the car. And when you cut that free, you definitely have to tie your frame together so it doesn't spring away from uh, one side to the other and that'll uh, create issues for you to reassemble the front clip uh, once you get to that point. Now the uh, front K section has been cut and that's a hollow once you do that. So here I've made up a couple little plates and I've kind of fitted them to the shape of that of the area that's been cut and you see I have them tack welded or one of them tack welded here to one side uh, out of the picture on the other side this is the same. And I'm going to need to weld that in really good and make sure that's nice and strong because we're going to be welding our crossbar to that plate. Here is the actual weld after uh, I tack welded everything. Then I stitch welded. And I, the reason I do this is for me, I, I try to weld about every three quarter inch and just keep lapping. And this is a lot more um, easily controlled. Uh, if I run just a straight bead all the way up, sometimes I can wander a little bit. And this weld here, to me, I feel really good about. I know that it's got real good uh, penetration, and it's basically tied the plate uh, to the uh, existing K-member uh, very well. Here you can see where I've welded my uh, uh, bar that goes from one side of the K-member, where it's been boxed in, to the other. And uh, this is, a, a, once again, a real critical thing. We must keep track of where we're at. Uh, so I've welded here uh, in, in a couple different spots. And I basically go all the way around like this. Uh, if you'll notice, too, that this bar is kind of to the front edge, there's reason for that also. First of all, there's some pan clearance for the oil pan of the engine. Uh, so we have to worry about that. And the other thing is, too, that it's actually uh, in line with the side edge of the the uh, old K member, and that get, uh, that adds as support because we're actually pushing against a vertical wall rather than just that plate that I just added, and that could give flex. So we want to keep it close to the edge where we have actually a corner. Here is a pic of the actual front. Uh, frame section that was cut away and I've jumped ahead and I've just shown you here where I've tack welded a little brace uh, but also you can see beneath the brace you'll see that that is the chromoly tube that ties it back uh, together from one side to the other and I've already welded in the uh, cap plate and everything in this in this picture. I also want to show you beneath that and the reason why I want to show you this is because I've opted to mount this chromoly uh, connector bar to the center of this horn so to speak because I like the looks of that better but in doing so rather than staying close to an edge like I just showed you on the main K member I had to go beneath here and weld in a plate so that I could uh, create structure so that it would be nice and solid and backed up so it wasn't just welded directly to a flat plate on its facing. Now let's move on to the steering link and the front rack in itself. And here what I'm showing you is where I've channeled out that K member for clearance for my steering link. And that's a, a U-joint uh, setup where we have to turn corners and be able to go from the steering column to the rack. And this is a, a pretty critical thing to do as well. I need the clearance uh, and I need to maintain a specific uh, angle, I guess I want to say. Uh, you want to make sure that this thing doesn't have too much of a bind in it. So in this case, I've had to kind of insert it into this area. So I had to clear this out. So what I've done here is I've used piping. I've cut the, a slot, and then I've inserted a half pipe. One, one is a little bit larger than the other section. You see it there because of the U-joint, uh, you know, takes up more space. But then uh, that actually embeds that link into a, a nice orientation to where I won't have a bind on my steering as I rotate the steering wheel. So this is a, uh, this took quite a bit of time here to get this all nicely done. 
and uh, you know welded in and, and ground and cleaned and, and you know all of the above so just want to point it out as well let's talk more about the steering now and show you some more the steering link needs to be captured so what I'm showing you here is an eyelet uh, it's basically a heim joint so it has a ball inside of it so that as the steering column is rotated it can spin on this and it also gives adjustability so that we can make sure we keep the orientation of the uh, change of direction correct so that we do not have bind on the steering and I did notice that if I lower this I'll actually get a little tiny bind but if I get it right in the right spot so there again it's adjustable uh, I'll have a nice smooth steering uh, rotation of the steering wheel. Here's the business end of the actual rack and pinion steering system. And this is just a matter of making sure that we, there are some things we have to pay attention to. I, I don't want to make this, uh, make light of this, but this is just to show you that uh, it's complete. Uh, the mounting brackets have to be put in the right spot. We have to factor in the clearance for the bottom of the engine, actually for the harmonic balancer uh, that's towards the front and that kind of gets close to this rack um, and all of that is confirmed when we mock things up as we're basically putting the brackets in the proper position we need to have them in so uh, I'm not going to go through all of that detail but I just want to show you here this is positioned perfectly also another thing that has to be thought of is uh, to avoid bump steer, and that's a, a term that some of you may be familiar with, meaning that when you hit a bump on the road, you don't want your tires to turn the car. So we have to make sure that the angularity of this rack is in just such a way that we don't have that situation occur. So that's a critical uh, thing in itself. Man, I thoroughly got into putting that uh, video together that you just watched. Uh, doing that voiceover, that brought me back to when I was doing that work. Oh man, it was so much fun. I actually did most of that work in the winter. So, you know, when you're inside here in Michigan, we got to have things to do. And that was fun to do. But anyway, I got a little technical. So if you have any questions, that's fine. I'm going to answer anything. I, I love talking this stuff. But that's going to give you an idea of the meat and potatoes of what my channel is all about. Not just that, though because you're gonna also see me take these cars out on the street and I'm gonna have you guys come along with me, uh, riding along, because I'm gonna have some cameras mounted in there so you guys can get a bird's eye view of what it looks like, it sounds like, and all of the above. I tell you what, these things are little fire-breathing monsters. And uh, you know, those that are, you don't know a fast car until you've ridden in a fast car. That one right there will scare you. Seriously, it scares me. And uh, I don't mind it at the track where I have VHT and sticky, uh, sticky surface and I can grip, but I don't, I don't frog around and hot dog with that thing on the road because I don't want to ruin it, first of all, by crashing, but also I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I, don't, I, don't, I abide by the law. I don't do stupid things. So if I get pulled over with that, and I have in the past just because they want to look at it mainly, and they run my plate and they see that I'm an old guy, that I have no tickets, they respect me for that. And I'm able to drive around, here we are in Michigan, West Michigan, and in Grand Rapids, I drive that downtown on the weekend nights, and all the kids and stuff going into the bars and clubs and all that, and they're all like, yeah, cool, you know, cops are going, yeah, you know, and this thing's just, just bad, it's just fun to drive. But anyway, I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride on some of those trips. I think you guys are gonna be pretty, uh, have some fun with that. You're gonna be pretty interested in that for sure. So anyway, cutting the video short. I know it's a long video. Thanks for sticking with me this long. If you have any questions, once again, ask them. And like I always say, keep on working on them because they're never done.